He would allow me to pastor, to preach at his church is amazing. So it's it's amazing. And my friends that came along, Tommy, Joel, Sam, Bernie, Florence, and everyone else at the book place. It's a pleasure to be here this evening and to share the word with you. Um, let me just start with a word of prayer. Precious Father, I just thank you so much for this opportunity. I just thank you so much for this time to share your word and to reveal you, Lord God. For your word says that the entrance of your word brings light, Lord God, and you give understanding to us who are simple. So, Father, I pray that you open up our hearts and our capacity to understand and to hear from you in this time, Lord God. Father, may you fill us with the light of your word, Lord, that we might be pushed on the path of everlasting life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So my title for today is, What Do You See? And it was a word that came to me this morning at 6 a.m. <laughs> and I just felt like the Lord was asking me personally, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see? And I feel like this is a word that I've had in my spirit for a while. So it just kind of came together as I was preparing for today. So I believe that one of the questions that the Lord is asking us as a body at large is what do you see? And then also for us in here today, what is it that we see? I'm going to be reading from Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah is like my favorite prophet. That's why in the game, when, when there was like a prophet, I was like, Jeremiah, because I love Jeremiah. I don't know why, because his story is a bit up and down, but I do love Jeremiah. So I'm going to read Jeremiah 1. And one of the things that I like to do is study the commissioning of the different prophets in the Bible. So Isaiah, Ezekiel, I want to know how they got into ministry, how the Lord sent them forth. Um, so Jeremiah chapter 1, I'm going to read from verse 4. So from verse 1 to 3, it gives a bit of history as to who Jeremiah was. But from verse 4, it says, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, oh Lord, God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for all, for to all who I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put his hand, then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day as a prophet over the nations and over kingdoms to pluck up, to break down, to destroy, to overthrow, to build and to plant. And this is the part I want us to, to think about. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see an almond branch. And the Lord said, you have seen very well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. The word of the Lord came to me a second time saying, what do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot facing away from the north. Then the Lord said to me, out of the north disaster shall be let loose upon the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I'm calling all the tribes of all the kingdoms of the north, declares the Lord, and they shall come and everyone shall set his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem against all its walls. Um, all around and against all the cities of Judah, and I will declare my judgments against them for forsaking me. So the scripture then goes on to talk a little bit about what the Lord wanted to do with Jeremiah. But what always stands out to me when I read this, most people go straight for Jeremiah 1, 5, you know, before I knew you, I appointed you. But I never understood why the Lord showed Jeremiah an almond tree. Out of everything he could have seen, he said, showed him an almond tree. That never made sense to me. It says, Jeremiah, what do you see? And he said, I see an almond branch. And the Lord says, you have seen well. So in scholarly form, <laughs> I went to Google what an almond tree was about. Why an almond tree? And even look just theologically, Hebraically, what is the, what is the significance of an almond tree? Now the Hebrew word for almond tree is shokade, spelled S-H-A-K-E-D, shokade. Okay, just means almond tree. But the root word for that is shokad. And that word means to watch, to wake, to see. 
So the fact that the Lord said, what do you see? And he showed him an almond tree, which pretty means I'm watching. And then he says, you seem correctly for I'm watching over my word to fulfill it. And I believe that that's one of the promises of the Lord that we can hold on to, that the Lord is watching over his word to fulfill it in our lives. Amen? Amen. 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 Secondly, what do you see? Jeremiah said, I see a boiling pot. All these funny imagery that the Lord shows people. But the boiling pot symbolized the calamity that was about to come on um, Israel if they wouldn't heed the voice of the Lord, of the Lord in turn. It's a message that the Lord will judge, but in his judgment there will be hope. So the Lord does so many things and takes Jeremiah on this journey, opens up his eyes to see and to perceive certain things, and then he asks him, what do you see? And the significance of what do you see is what I'm going to talk about in today. But Jeremiah 31 verse 28 says, And it shall come to pass that as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to overthrow, destroy and bring harm, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares the Lord. And we see the fulfillment of what Jeremiah saw in those verses. Jeremiah saw correctly. Remember I said that the, the question that I felt the Lord was asking me was what do you see? Do we see correctly? God often asks us questions. Adam, where are you? And it's not because God doesn't know the answer to these questions. God knows everything. And it's not because he doesn't know the answer or he doesn't want to, or he's withholding information, but it's because he's working with our faith. He's working with our ability to perceive and to know. If we can't see it, then there's very little that God can do. God knows and asks us questions to pull out what is known in our spirit and bring it out into manifestation. Is this making sense? There's some questions that the Lord asks us. And I'm like, God, why did you ask that question? Can these dry bones live? Of course, if you want them to live, they can live. But the Lord asks these questions to draw out what is unknown to what is known. God reveals things in our spirit. But how that information is interpreted through our soul, our mind, our will and emotions is what the Lord wants us to know. There's a line from one of my favorite Chris Tomlin songs, I Will Rise, and he says, our faith shall be our eyes. And I remember listening to that line, I was like, oh, that sounds so sweet, Lord. What does that mean? Our faith shall be our eyes. And the Lord was telling me that faith is your ability to see spiritually. And not just see spiritually, walk through until that spiritual manifestation has a physical manifestation. Does that make sense? Faith and sight are inextricably linked. So the Lord is asking, what do you see? What is it that you see? Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I feel like there should be like a bracket, so I see, I'm not trying to add to the word of God. But the things are not seen in the physical, but are perceived in the spiritual. So the Lord asked Adam, Adam, where are you? The Lord asked Jeremiah, what do you see? Ezekiel, Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 says the hand of the lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold there were many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry and he said to me son of man can these bones live and i answered O oh lord god you know Whenever I used to read that, okay, dry bones, can these dry bones live? And I, I never really understood the imagery. God, why do you want these dry bones to live? What's so significant about the dry bones? But the part that stood out to me as I was rereading this scripture was just the question, son of man, can these dry bones live? God's question to Ezekiel was one, to understand where his level of faith was at. If Ezekiel would have said, no, they can't live, then what well, we prophesy according to our faith. So if you don't have any faith, then you can't speak to the dry bones and cause them to live again. God's question to Ezekiel was one to test his level of faith. Even thinking internally and thinking about some of the things in our lives, can we see what God can do with what we can bring? If we can't see it, if we can't perceive it, how are we to prophesy to it? How are we to bring life to it? How are we to, it doesn't make sense. We have to be able to see it. The Bible says we prophesy in accordance to our faith. Ezekiel saw, perceived, had faith and prophesied. And because he did that, the dry bones became flesh. Do we have enough faith for the task at hand? Again, God often asks us questions, not because he doesn't know the answer, but he wants to see how do we see? What is it that you see? Jesus asked Peter, who do men say I am? And it wasn't because Jesus didn't know who he was, 
But he wanted to understand, as my disciples, you guys have been following me for me for the past three years. What do you see of me? What, can, what has the Lord revealed to you? Peter obviously answered, you are the son of man, the Messiah, you are the Christ. And Jesus says, you've seen well, you've understood well, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. What is it that we see? I feel like the body of Christ is at a place at the moment where there's a lot that is unseen. We're not seeing as we ought to see. With all the chaos that's going on in the world, a lot of us are subject to the news, subject to the, the things that are going on, subject to peer pressure, work pressure, I need to be doing this, I need to be doing that. And I wonder when we will see as God wants us to see. When we will truly get an understanding of what faith means, an understanding of what the Lord requires from us in this time and in this season. A personal example, I remember a few weeks ago, <laughs> I was moping about my life, just thinking, oh, I want to be doing this, I want to be here, I want to be there. And just as a person, I often set high standards and high targets for myself, um, quite the perfectionist. And I was just thinking about, oh, God, why can't I do what this person's doing and what that person's doing? And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say to me, who are you? And that was a question, I'm like, ah, am I not your daughter? <laughs> I'm iffy, Alexis, or Sai. But in that question, it was, it was enough for me to know who am I? I'm not Becky, I'm not Sandra, I'm not Florence, I'm not Bernie, I'm not Tommy. I'm, I'm iffy. And I felt like in that question, the Lord was saying, you are different. Your calling is different to what their calling is. You need to answer that question correctly. What's mine is not theirs, and what's theirs is not mine. There's no basis for comparison. We're not running the same race. We don't, we're not doing the same things. We, we're not gifted in the same. God doesn't make duplicates. We're not the same. So the Lord asked me, who are you? After that question, I was like, ah, okay, maybe I don't know my identity. Maybe I'm not as fixed in you as I ought to be. The following question was, what have I called you to? And I've been on that journey since then of really accepting who I am in Christ and really allowing my identity to be fully fixed in Christ Jesus, to not look to the right and to the left to see what so-so and so is doing. So the question of what do you see was one that this morning as well, I was just meditating on what do I see for myself? What do I believe that the Lord is saying to me? What do I believe that the Lord is saying to the body? What do I believe that the Lord is saying concerning my, my household, my family? What do I believe the Lord is saying? The questions that the Lord asks, they call forth what's already there. We often know the answers to these questions, but we're not aware that we know the answer. The questions that the Lord asks call for what's lurking in your spirit. Can you see it yet? Can you comprehend it? Can you apprehend it? Does it make sense? Is it tangible to you? I put a list of some questions that the Lord might be asking. Um, I know the Lord, has, the Lord has asked me before, am I enough for you? Kind of sounds like Hannah and Elkanah. And she was complaining that she didn't have a child. And Elkanah said, am I not more than lot 10 sons? Thank you. Am I not more than 10 sons? You have me. Are you, am I enough? And I believe that that's a question that the Lord is asking. Am I your El Shaddai? Am I your all in all? El Shaddai means the multi-breasted one, the all-sufficient one. Am I enough for you? These questions require a response. The Lord doesn't just want us to see, just to see. Can these dry bones live? Can the areas of dryness in your life, can the areas that seem so dead, can they live? Because if you don't believe that they can live, then who's gonna believe for you? The areas where you feel like, no, God, you can't do it. My family, oh, they're too far gone. That person, no, 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 you can't do it. If you don't believe, then who's going to believe for you? Mm -hmm. Can these dry bones live? Can your family members be saved? Amen. Can they be saved? Can you visualize it? Does it make sense to you? Can you love again? Can I, can I really live for you, Christ Jesus? These are questions, real questions that we need to ask ourselves. And if we don't have a... If we're unable to perceive what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, if we're unable to have a, a solid answer to these things, if we can't see it in the Spirit, then how can it become a reality? God, can you touch the heart of so, so, and so? That person that you believe is unlovable, can you do it? If the answer is yes, God, you can do it, you will do it. If you have that kind of faith, the Bible says if you have faith as little as a mustard seed, you can say to a mountain, be you removed, be cast into the rivers, and it can go. Can you see it? Who are you? What do you see? Jesus came to make the blind see. 
Jesus came to make the blind see. And oftentimes when we think about the blind seeing, I know I, I always think about, you know, the amazing evangelists out on the roads praying for people and, you know, receive healing, receive sight and all of those stuff. But the first kind of healing of sight that the Lord wants to do is internal. It's spiritual. Can you perceive? Can you see what I want you to see? Blindness. The blindness that we speak about is first an internal spiritual blindness before an external one. If you can believe it, or you believe it, but do you see it? <laughs> that was the question. You believe it, yeah, God, you can do it for so-so and so. You can do it for that person, that person. But can you see it concerning yourself? And I really want us to ask the Lord to open up our eyes, to hear what he is saying, to see it. Can you perceive the leading of the Lord over your life? Do you have an understanding of where he wants to take you? Can you perceive the will of God concerning you? Is it tangible in your spirit? Is it, is it tangible to you to know that, no, God, I see where you're taking me? And the thing is, when I say see it, you might not have all the intricate details as to how the Lord wants to do it, but I believe, I trust, I believe, I see it. It's tangible to me. So the Lord gives us sight, and he wants for us to have sight. It's interesting because in Revelation 3, um, God speaking to the Laodicean church, the lukewarm church, he says... I counsel you to buy gold refined by fire so that you may be rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourselves of the shame of your nakedness um, and your nakedness may not be seen and anoint, use medicine to anoint your eyes so you may see. The Lord is speaking to the, the lukewarm church and he says you're not even seen as you ought to be seen. Come to me, I'll give you medicine so you can see. I'll give you eye sap, I'll give you eye salve that you might see and perceive what I'm saying. God gives sight that we can have vision. And for me, vision is not just sight, it's sight undergirded by purpose. It's an understanding of this is where I need to be and this is how I need to get there. It's God gives us vision. The Bible says without vision, the people cast off restraint. That means the people become, they, have, they lose their self-control, the people perish. And God gives us vision, not just so we can have vision and have purpose, but we can have a revelation of his will. And God gives us a revelation of his will so we can have insight to know what to do. So we know how he wants us to do it. Another word that came to me was interpretation. And interpretation is why am I seeing what I'm seeing? God, why are you showing this to me? When I think about my life, when I think about other people, why, do you, why are you showing this to me? And that God is not afraid of our whys. You know, God, you say you want me to do X, Y, Z, why? Why? What, what, what would you have me do with it? How do you want me to do it? Asking him how, the intricate details are not running ahead without him. What do you see? Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, the Bible says that, well, the scholars say that he was about 17 when the Lord called him. 17 when the Lord called him. And he was a prophet called to preach a harsh message to the children of Israel, to the southern kingdoms, um, Judah, Benjamin, all of that kind of stuff. A hard message, and the Lord, before he even sent him out, he said, what do you see? Because if you don't see correctly, you can't do the work that the Lord has called for you to do. If your vision is blurry, you can't do the work that the Lord has called you to do. So I believe that the Lord is opening the eyes of our hearts. I believe the Lord is opening us up to understand, to perceive what he is saying to us in these times. God's question to Ezekiel was one to test his level of faith. So when the Lord asks us certain questions internally, as we think about certain things, am I enough? God, are you enough for me? For us to see, God, do I even have enough faith for the work that you've called for me to do? Do I, do I understand it? Do I, do I apprehend it? Better yet, do I comprehend what you are saying? I believe the Lord is opening our eyes. Amen. Amen. The Lord said, I'm watching over my word to perform it in you. I'm watching over my word to perform it in you. And not a word of his falls to the floor. So as we have built up our faith, and even as we have a heart filled with faith to say, Lord, we hear what you're saying to us. We understand what you're saying to us. Father, we want to see as you see. We want to understand and comprehend. We want to walk by faith. We want our faith to truly, truly be our eyes. Mm. I pray that the Lord opens up our hearts to receive that. Mm. I know that I'm always challenged as I look at the world, as I look at what's going on, um, as I look at my family life, as I look at different things. And sometimes I'm like, God, can you really restore? Are, are these people too hard? Are their hearts too hard? You look out just into the world, you read, read the news, read the newspapers, watch the news, God, can you truly do something about this? Can you really do something about the systemic racism or the injustice against different people? God, can you really do it? And the Lord works with our faith. Do I believe he can do it? Yes, I believe he can do it. Can I see it? If I can see it, then the Lord can use me. If you can see it, then the Lord can use you. Do you see it? 
and do you understand why you see what you see? I'll read um, Ephesians 1 from verse 17. And this is one of my favorite prayers to pray for myself. Ephesians 1 from verse 17. Paul speaking to the church at Ephesus, I'll read from verse 16. It says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the Lord... Of, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, having the eyes of your heart, some say the eyes of your understanding, enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he put all things under his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And I love that prayer, that the Lord might give us a spirit of understanding, a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of revelation, a spirit of insight. I often pray for my eyes. I'm like, God, I want to see how you see. I don't want to see what other people are seeing. I don't want to be led by the physical things going on around me and allowing that to change how I view people, how I view what your purpose is in people. Because sometimes when people hurt you as well, we change our perceptions towards them. But the Lord is saying, no, don't let the physical things change your perceptions. See them spiritually and ask the Lord to bring that into fruition for them. What questions is the Lord asking you today? And this is what I want to leave you guys with. What questions or what question is the Lord asking you today? Is he enough for you? Can those dry bones live? Can that family member be saved? Can that family member come back on the path of, of everlasting life? Can your relationship be restored? Who are you? The Lord asks many questions. And I just really pray that the Lord gives us an understanding that he anoints our eyes to see how he sees. The Lord says he's watching over his word to perform it. And I pray that this word becomes flesh in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Precious Father, we just thank you so much for who you are, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, because you don't just give us sight that we might see everything, Lord God, but you give us sight because you have a vision. You have a plan that you want to perform in your people of this earth, Lord God. Father, may our hearts be receptive to hear what you are saying. May our hearts be receptive to understand what you're saying to us, Lord God. Father, may we get it. May we understand the height, the width, the depth of your love, Lord God. May we walk with you intimately, Lord God. Precious Father, open up the eyes of our understanding. Open the eyes of our heart that we might see you, that we might apprehend and comprehend what you're saying, Lord God. Father, may we know that our vision, we need vision in order to work the works that you've called us to do, Lord. Father, you've given us a command to occupy until you come. Father, I pray for greater vision, Lord God, to even know what work to do. That we will not be busy plowing fields that don't even belong to us, Lord God. Give us vision to know what to do and what not to do. Father, your word says that the sons of Issachar, the men of Issachar, were discerning, were discerning of the times and seasons, and they knew what Israel ought to do. May we be discerning of the times and seasons and know what we ought to do in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray even as you've asked me to deliver this word, I know that there's faith in this room, Lord God. Father, I pray that you open up our eyes, Lord God, to discern and to see what you're saying, Lord God. Any veil over our eyes be removed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, that we might know our role in the body and our call in the body and we might understand what you've called us to do and what you've called us not to do, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Father, I ask for increased vision in this time, Lord God. And as you're restoring, restoring eyes to the body that you're building, Father, I pray that the people might be in place, the apostles might be in place, the prophets, the teachers, the evangelists, the administrations, the help, the government. Everybody might be in place, Lord God, for the return of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, as a body, may we be blameless, spotless, without spot, wrinkle, blemish, Lord God. 
Father, I pray that we'll be marked by holiness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray that you continue to give us a heart, a hunger, a thirsting for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. That our love, our hearts might not wax cold, Lord, in this end time, Lord. We might not be deceived, Lord. Our hearts might not be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin, but we will see all that you want us to see and say all that you want us to say and be all that you want us to see. Help us to see correctly, Lord. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.